What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be starting our Data Fundamentals series. Now in this series, I'm gonna be walking through some really core fundamental concepts about data. If you've been on my YouTube channel for any amount of time, you know that we talk a lot about data, specifically about how to use tools to work with your data. But up until now, I haven't really dived in and broken down the core concepts of what data is and how it's used in the real world. So in this series, that's what I aim to do. And in this video, we're gonna be starting off with what is data? Let's jump over to my screen and take a look. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about what data is. Again, we're starting from the very basics, we're really working our way up through this series. So by definition, data is just raw facts and figures. It doesn't even necessarily have to be on a computer. It could be on a notepad. If you're writing down one, two, three, four, five, that is data that you're writing down. That's gonna be harder to use that data necessarily because you know on a computer, it's easier to process and use data, but that is data. Some examples of data are things like a number, the number 45, that is a piece of data. A word could be data, just the word completed or a sentence, that is also data. And then a date could be data as well. So we have 1210 of 2024, this is a piece of data. Now, the thing about data is, is that data is everywhere. It's in everything we do all the time, but without collecting it, without context of what this data actually means, it's basically useless. Look at some examples of how data is used in the real world, something that a lot of you will use almost every single day. So let's take a look at this first one. This is a weather app. I use my weather app almost all the time. I gotta send my kids to school and I wanna check if it's rainy, if it's hot, if it's cold, if they need a jacket, if they don't. And that's something that requires a lot of data. Meteorologists use tools to collect data on all of these things. Then they're presented in these apps. So they collect data about weather, temperature, humidity, location, time, and they take all of this and they aggregate it. That just means they bring all of it together into one place and they aggregate these numbers. And finally, they'll present it to you based off of your data, your location, where you actually are. And so that is something that is extremely data dependent. They typically will process this as well as forecast, which means they're gonna kind of predict out what they think is gonna happen in the next hour, two hours, maybe it's a day or several days ahead. They can also use this data to predict what might happen in your location. Another example would be a bank app. So I go on my phone all the time to check my banking statements to make sure that you know I didn't spend too much money and everything in your banking app is data. And so when you go on this app, like you can see in this image down here, you can see where you spent your money. You can see the amount you spent your money, the date and the time that you spent your money. These are all different points of data that the bank has collected. Banks collect hundreds, if not thousands of data points, but really common ones are things like bank deposits and transactions and payments that you've made, all of these things so they can put it in your dashboard so that you can track your money. Now let's take a look at different types of data because there isn't just one type of data. Data isn't just one thing. Data is really complex and there's a lot of different things to it. So really briefly, I'm gonna to touch on structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. Structured data is really neat and really easy to visualize and see, as you can see in this uh, image right here. That typically refers to something that has columns and rows, something like an Excel file. Everybody's used an Excel file before and so that is something that is very structured, very easy to kind of visualize and use and understand. On the exact opposite side of this, we have unstructured data. Unstructured data is kind of all over the place and it might be a lot harder to use. For example, that could be something like a photograph that you took or maybe a video or an audio file. These are all examples of unstructured data that you can't really put into something like an Excel file for it to be in columns and rows. Then we have something called semi-structured data. Semi-structured data is closer to structured data than it is unstructured data, but it is more complex than something like an Excel file. For example, semi-structured data might be something like a JSON file. Now, we haven't gotten to file formats and file types yet in this series, but when we do, I'll dive into what JSON files are because JSON files store things differently than something like structured data where they nest data in kind of these hierarchies. So let's take a look at the two main ones, structured versus unstructured data. Structured data is the data that I primarily work with as a data analyst. This is typically gonna be something like a row and column in an Excel file or a CSV file, or in something like a relational database. 
A database is just a place where you'll store a lot of data and all of that data typically connects in some way so you can work with a lot of it. Structured data is also quantitative versus qualitative like unstructured data. Structured data is numbers based and it's measurable and so you can easily kind of track it and use it. Whereas qualitative could be something like a survey where it might be free text or it's someone saying, you know, I had a really great experience at this and I really liked this and I liked this. That's a little bit harder to actually put into numbers how much that person liked. But quantitative may be, hey, how much did you like this on a scale of one to 10? And if the person puts a seven, that's a very specific answer. Now the amount of data that sits as structured data is significantly less than unstructured data. Structured data is only about 20% of enterprise data compared to 80% of unstructured data. And so there's a lot more unstructured data in the world and so what a lot of people in the data world do is they try to take that unstructured data and they try to make it structured. And so that is a big part of what a lot of data professionals do. Lastly, we just touched on this, but structured data tends to be things like numbers, dates, strings, which are things like words and text versus unstructured data, which is things like images, audio, video, and others. Well, that being said, data is everywhere. It is all around us all the time. And especially in this technological world we live in, it is literally in everything we do. But the challenge, especially for people in data who are working with data, the challenge is to collect it, to organize and analyze it so that you can then use that data. And so we're going to be covering a lot of these different topics in this series so that you can understand exactly what it is and how we can. Thank you guys for joining in on the very first Data Fundamentals video. We will have more like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.